Hey, how's it going? My name is Riley and I'm a documentary filmmaker that likes talking about everything from filmmaking, creativity, and faith. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Sony a7S III when it's paired with an Atomos Ninja 5 and the ProRes RAW capabilities that this setup can deliver. Now, the a7S III is already a powerful camera that produces a great image. So I'm gonna try to nail down exactly what improvements adding a Ninja 5 and using ProRes RAW can bring. I'll also touch on my experience working with ProRes RAW and whether or not I think it's the best setup and best format to be shooting with the Sony a7S III. Let's dive in. Right away, I noticed that the 12-bit ProRes RAW image is gorgeous and it's easy to work with. It feels like the setup really doesn't have a whole lot of compromises considering that you can do 4.2K outputted to the Atomos Ninja 5 at up to 60 frames per second. You won't be able to record in 120 frames per second with the Ninja 5. You'll have to rely on the internal codec for that. The 12-bit image really does feel like you can push it a bit further than the 10-bit internal image. I think that for most settings and scenarios, 10-bit is going to be more than enough. But occasionally, if you're doing some heavy color grading and masking, or you're working with some visual effects or green screens, having that extra information is gonna be really nice. I'm also pleased to report that there doesn't seem to be any autofocus compromises when using this combination. With previous Sony cameras, having a 4K signal outputted through the HDMI meant that some of the autofocus features were limited or just turned off. With this combination, I'm still able to use eye tracking as well as the great autofocus features that this camera comes with. Just like any other camera system or setup, it doesn't come without its flaws or drawbacks to be aware of. I think the biggest thing to keep in mind is that a lot of the settings like frame rates that you're gonna want to access quickly have to be done through the HDMI output menu tab. And this HDMI output frame rate actually overrides the internal frame rate that you have set up. So it's definitely possible to accidentally start recording and realize that you are in fact in the wrong frame rate. It's a relatively small thing, but it's something to get used to when you first pair the two together. The other quirk to keep in mind with this setup is that right now with the firmware that I'm using, I think it's 10.54 is that the time remaining doesn't display accurately when using ProRes RAW or ProRes RAW HQ. The time that it displays is actually about three and a half times less time than you actually have to work with. So for example, if when you switch it to ProRes RAW, it says 10 minutes remaining, you probably actually have about 35 minutes left on the SSD that you're using. It just means that the time displayed isn't necessarily going to be reliable and you're going to have to do a little bit of math to figure out actually how much time you have left. I emailed Atomos and their support team emailed me back and said that it's a bug that they're aware of and that they're working on a fix. So hopefully in a future firmware update that gets resolved and we can get more accurate times on the time remaining display on the Ninja 5. Now, using ProRes RAW is definitely a great format to work with. There is a ton of information to be able to manipulate and push around, but one misconception I want to address is dynamic range. The camera is only capable of so many stops of dynamic range, and depending on the test that you look at, it's somewhere in the 13 to 14 ballpark. Now, using the ProRes RAW format does not add more dynamic range to the image. You're not gonna suddenly get 15 or 16 stops to be able to work with since the sensor is only capable of so much. And a RAW format maximizes the sensor, but it doesn't expand beyond what the sensor is capable of. 
What this does mean though is that you have more flexibility within that image. Within the 13 or 14 stops, you're able to push and pull the midtones and highlights and shadows around more. And so if, for example, you want to take something like the clouds that are in the highlights and you want to add more color and contrast to that image, you're gonna have an easier time pushing this and manipulating that image to be what you want without any sort of banding or artifacting when you use ProRes RAW over the internal codec. With that being said, I do think that people will notice a boost in dynamic range just due to the fact that having a 12-bit image means that you don't need to expose as far to the right. Having all that extra information means that we can protect our highlights a little bit more and boost the midtones or possibly even shadows when we need to. So I do think on a very practical level, people will find that when they use ProRes RAW, they're able to retain a better highlight roll off and more information in the bright parts of the image. ProRes RAW also bypasses a lot of the camera's internal processing. So you're gonna notice that there is a little bit more noise in the image and some of the features like lens compensation and the distortion corrections are not gonna be there. The idea with using the raw sensor data is that you have more control over the noise reduction and you would manipulate that distortion correction on your own. It definitely adds a little extra time in post having to go through and make all of these little fixes and tweaks manually. Another thing to keep in mind when considering whether or not this combination and working with ProRes RAW is right for your workflow is the media and storage costs. The SSDs that the Atomos Ninja 5 uses can actually be a lot cheaper than some of the really fast V90 and CF Express Type A cards that the camera uses to record internally. However, the file sizes are decently big in ProRes RAW. The normal ProRes RAW format is about the size of ProRes RAW HQ. So if you're used to working with ProRes RAW HQ uh, or ProRes RAW 422 and that file size and the cost to archive and edit off of external drives potentially doesn't scare you, then this is not gonna be a whole lot different. But if you're used to working with some of the more compressed internal 4K options or even the internal HD options with this camera, then you might be in for a little bit of a shock with how much bigger ProRes RAW is than some of the internal formats. So is it worth it? Is ProRes RAW the best format to use with the A7S Mark III and is it worth some of the drawbacks that it comes with? At this point, I would say yes and no. It definitely produces the best image. However, it feels like an incomplete product. With the inaccurate time remaining display on the Ninja 5 and the missing ISO and white balance controls in Final Cut Pro, it feels like there's a handful of things missing for this to be the best all around package. For me, there will be shoots and projects that I will opt for the ProRes RAW footage. Not only because is the image gorgeous, but also because the external monitor in the Atomos Ninja 5 is definitely top notch. It's a bright HDR screen that has a lot of assist features and it's just something that I like having on top of the camera. But I think there are gonna be shoots and projects that I opt not to go for that. For something like this, for YouTube, uh, especially talking head stuff, the 10-bit internal codec I think is the way to go because of the large file sizes. As well as something like weddings, I think the 10-bit image is definitely gonna be a happy medium there between great image quality and file sizes. Either way, I think this is an excellent tool to have in your kit, and it's one that I'm excited to be able to use for years to come. It's definitely a great time to be a filmmaker with all of these exciting tools coming out at such an affordable price. 
Let me know in the comments section below if you've worked with ProRes RAW on the A7S III and what your impressions of it have been so far. I would love to hear from you. As well, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button as well as the subscribe button down below. It really is the best way to help support this channel. Thanks so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.